Hey, what's up? It's Crates here. Uh, Steve, thanks for joining. Gio, what's up? Uh, we are live now. I'm going to go ahead and send you guys a link in the chat. Uh, Elliot should be joining in a couple of minutes as well. He's just having dinner. Um, and for anybody tuning in, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, Gio and Steve, thanks for tuning in as well. Uh, of course, of course. I'm excited to keep working on this feature for Viday, the uh, daily checklist feature. Um, we made some great progress this week, so hopefully we can really continue to get it close to being finished. Um, I'm going to quickly cycle through my scenes here, make sure everything's lined up. I'm bring that audio back a little bit too. IntelliJ, we've got Chrome. Looks like my inspector window disappeared, so let me find that. There we go, and Cypress. Looking good. So, where we last left off, we want to make sure that we have the ability to change state for these guys. We wrote some tests that cover that case. Um, so, Find that window real quick. And uh, I can scroll through here. So the tests that are failing that we wrote before, Foo2 doesn't have checked class after the first click because it's not changing state. And the same thing goes for the one that uh, was previously incomplete. Um, so. Let's go ahead and uh, make the tests that are failing pass. Switching back over to IntelliJ, um, we'll go ahead and start by taking a look at our checklist item. And so in order for this to change state, uh, we're going to need to mutate the object that we are currently storing that state in. So right now, um, I think these are actually all being pushed directly down from the parent component, checklist daily. So it looks like we've got, um, yeah, the checklist is, is there. So I think in order for this to work right, we're going to want to prop down the uh, mutator so that we have something that we can uh, used to update the state. So let's include that. I did this in one of my other sticky uh, state implementations. I'm wondering um, where else did I use it? I used it in the auth hook that I wrote. I used it in, I think, let's look for that auth hook real quick. See if I can get this typed correctly. That'll be in my libraries, auth, source, lib, use auth. What do we got? Okay, I think it's going to be a similar convention to this. So. But no, we didn't type the mutator though. So I guess we won't just say any. But I don't really know what I would put there. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, prop this down since we know that that is a requirement now uh, that set checklist gets passed down. So. Yeah. Uh, fill it out. 
Beck had a shorthand he used to use for this. I don't remember what it was. Um, he had a way of making it a little faster. So now what we got to do is uh, maybe I'd like to wrap that set checklist method, make it a little more clean. Um, Can we just sing a little bit? Yeah. Okay, it'll take a few seconds to catch up with the lag there. Um, what I'm gonna do is maybe put another guy in here that we can use. So, what do I want to do with this? Um, what I'd like to do is uh, use this key value to... What am I doing wrong there? No, oh. To do it. Okay. And then... Uh, it's just mad because it's empty, yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is get a specific uh, item here and update that. So um, we'll start with checklist and we'll say, uh, we'll do this immutably. We'll say new checklist is equal to, um, checklist with another source um, which will include just the uh, single value so it's equal to There's an easier way to do this, guys. See if um you can spot, or you know, maybe my brain's a little fried here, but um, maybe with spread syntax or something like that, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Um, Now what I want to do is set checklist with that. I'm doing it like this because if I wrote key inside the object in line 17, it would, I think, use the literal string key instead of the value of the key, which is why I'm doing it uh, in this syntax. It looks ugly to me. Um, I feel like something nagging at me there's got to be an easier way to write this but uh let's see if it works anyways um so now we can make a different method called update value or maybe we'll just call it set value i like that better getters and setters and we'll call set checklist item and the key is going to be list item dot id and the value will be whatever gets passed in. Um, so what do we need there? We need to curry that. Uh, so... Let's just pass this wholesale for now. Um, if I were feeling more on my game, I would be able to write something here that maybe would curry that value 
so that we don't have to pass the method as is. Because what I really want to do is I want to create another method that is specific to this one and uh, just pass value with something like call or apply rather than, uh, and then the key will be predefined by the other method. It's a little bit of an advanced pattern, so I'm not gonna worry about it for right now. Um, that's something that we could refactor later and make it cleaner and nicer. Um, I'm still feeling a little rusty here, so let's just plow ahead. You guys with me so far? Mm-hmm. Cool, so. I'm in here now. We have access to this sec checklist item. And uh, for set checklist item there, what we're gonna wanna do is call that whenever this is clicked. So, and then why don't we also pass the state? Which I think we already do because we, had, we passed check. Yeah, that's the prop. So on click, um, we're gonna call set checklist item. We're gonna call it with uh, ID and the inverse of the check state. And this should be coming from here. Now I've made some changes to the code and I'm curious to see uh, what kind of results of anything that got for us. Um, so let's see if it even compiles or if I have any errors. I don't think I have any type errors. I'm waiting to see if we get a reload here. If you have coffee and filters but no coffee maker, use dental floss and a filter to make your own tea bag. Well, that's, that's a lovely thought. You can go to the supermarket. That too. So it looks like my authentication hook failed here. Let me try and refresh that see what's going on. Nice. What I said, cause I said it. Okay. Okay, so it says checklist.map is not a function. Okay, so I think that the problem here is something to do with the way that I wrote this method. Um, what did I want to do here? Object assign. Target, checklist, override value. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of debugging here to see what might be going on. Um, so I'm gonna switch my view now to show, uh, let's look at Chrome. And I will navigate to the checklist feature. And that'll allow me to inspect and place a breakpoint and find out what's going on here now. I can hear David, my friend David from Oppenheimer screaming now. Um, that I should be using tests and not uh, breakpoints to debug this. And that's 
that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, because I've created a method here called set checklist item that we could write specs around now and theoretically test around now. Um, and probably something that I should think about doing, um, putting like a spy on the set checklist method here and uh, using that spy to, um, hang on, I'm trying to switch my window again. Uh, using that spy to detect what kind of value is about to be passed in um, when we're changing state here. So. Uh, I think what's happening here is um, something about the set checklist assign just isn't doing what I think it's supposed to. Um, so let's go ahead and look at our mocks. We know what checklist entry is supposed to look at and immediately I think I see the problem here. Um, so what we need to do is find the item in our array that needs mutation and write to that. That's where I screwed up here. Um, so that's going to make this a little bit different. Um, here's how I'll do this. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna find and create an array that's just uh, that array of objects filtered to get the ID in question. Uh, checklist dot filter object um, object dot ID is the same as the key that got passed in. And then I'm gonna do a silly not checklist item, and that's going to be. Um, That's going to be uh, anything where it does not equal the key. And then um, we've got our override value. I'm going to set a new object here, which is going to be checklist item at position zero. And override that. Do a let on checklist item, and uh, actually I don't need to do that anymore because what I can do now is const new checklist is equal to cat, and then in here we can put checklist not checklist item and uh, what we'll do is not checklist item dot concat uh, let's see what we're gonna make this const updated checklist item is equal to I'll just make that a little shorter and call it updated item. Um, and now we're going to concat updated item to new checklist. Um, and then there we go. I've got my new method. I think this is a little bit, um, a little bit better than what we had originally. Let's see if it compiles. So do you guys understand why this uh, failed to work, what I was doing originally? Because originally I was treating this like it was just a single object and using object assigned to override key values of that single object. But then I looked at the mocks and I said, wait a minute, that's not right. It's not a single object, it's an array of objects. So I have to pluck out the one that has the matching ID, mutate that only, and then concatenate that to everything that is not uh, to, the, to the array minus that. I probably shouldn't have uh, filtered this twice, um, 
because I could splice that value off. Um, so let me quickly consult the API for that because array.splice uh, mutates an original array, takes an entry out of it and returns that into another value. And that'll be better for time space complexity reasons. So let's... Uh, so then are you going to do splice then? Are you going to uh, do like an inline mutation? Versus, uh, uh, something that doesn't necessarily mutate your, your array? I'm going to use the splice, I think, potentially to uh, create both of these without running filter twice, which is going to take twice as long. You follow? Yeah. Well, before I go to that trouble, because um, I'm having a, a little time just getting the page to load, uh, let's get, take a look at... Um, let's take a look at where we're at now by switching over to Cypress. Okay, so it looks like our clicks aren't actually, uh, don't seem like they're doing anything. Oh, but wait a minute. When I look at this state, I see a checkbox on the first one. And then, uh, it looks like something is changing state here. Okay, they're just changing order, but they're not actually inverting the um, the value. But we are definitely getting close. So this is a step in the right direction for sure. So let's uh, let's see what happened there. We didn't override the value with the inverse of what it previously was. doing this a little differently. I'm just waiting for this to recompile now. And uh, taking another look at the concat prototype as well. Um, what I'm unsure of here is whether or not concat mutates the original array, uh, or if it just returns a result. Um, I don't care if it mutates it, because it'll be, the scope's going to be destroyed in a second anyways. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, it returns the new result without changing them. So that's, that's good. That's what we want. Um, Hey, it sounds hey. like Elliot. Yeah, hey, what's up? Elliot, I'll text you the uh, the stream URL, or you can find it on um, YouTube or Facebook. Yeah, uh, I'll the YouTube open actually. I'll just pop. Cool. Okay, so what's going on? I'm going to the latest Dom snapshot, trying to get it to advance to uh let's switch windows again here
There we go. Okay, so something weird's going on here. It's definitely not mutating the state. I'm gonna inspect this and uh, try and figure out what's going on. There's the inspector. So let's take a look at our sources and figure out exactly what's going on inside of this component. And the one that we're concerned with is, I think, checklist daily. Okay, so now I am uh, checking to see what happens here. We called foo2 with a value of false. Um, I think I see potentially the problem uh, at the time the method is being called. It is showing the same value. Um, so I clicked on the one that says max two hours a day. That one's already false. And then it's, uh, it's sending that same value in. Um, so now let me take a look at uh, the checklist item code here. And it does say that it's trying to pass in not checked. I wonder what would happen if I just left this uninverted. Let's have a look, let's see. I'll go ahead and dive back into the uh, the Chrome window here. I'll skip my breakpoints. For anybody who doesn't know what that looks like, let's take a quick look at that real quick. So this little button in the top right is what we're using to turn off our breakpoints here when we reload the page. Interesting. So I'm getting the same behavior in either case. Um, so let me try moving the logic from where it's at right now uh, and move the inversion into a different place. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So right now we've got the inversion happening. Uh, it was happening here and saying take whatever the state is and invert it. Um, now what I'm thinking is let's uh, we're gonna ignore that value part of this here and say that the override is going to be um, dot check. We'll invert it like that. Ultimately, we're ignoring value now. Um, I'm gonna leave it there, though, in the function, in case we want to make this more explicit later. I'll tell you a secret, I hate toggle functions, because sometimes when you have a toggle function that just toggles between states, um, you click it and it maybe double fires, and then you don't know that it's not working when it really is, because it's happening multiple times. Um, so I wanna leave value as an option there in set checklist item, um, instead of making it uh, you know, assuming it'll always be a toggle because toggles are unreliable in my opinion.
this is how we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna be honest about it and call it a toggle function and get rid of these because we're not really uh, we're not really doing it like that anymore. I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, I'm getting a little hesitant because it's being so flaky. Um, but let's see. ID, otherwise it can't know which one to toggle. So that was dumb. Um, okay. And then this we don't need. All right, let's see if that blends. Will it blend? Will it blend? Favorite episode of Will It Blend was when he did the pick lighters. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know, blender explosion. Right, 99% of the time, it's just like totally fine. He just blends completely ridiculous things. And then he did a bunch of pick lighters and the blender caught on fire because it's a bunch of gasoline and flints. Like, <laughs> maybe their ratings were flagging. <laughs> and they said, you know what? We got to give it a shot in the arm. Yeah, I need something a little more explosive. So this is odd. My uh, handler is no longer even getting called. Oh, I see the problem. So uh, let me switch this so you guys can see the problem too. Um, I gotta tell you, man, a lot of bugs in programming are just like this. And uh, I'm surprised that IntelliJ didn't check, uh, didn't catch this, maybe it did. I see that there's a red line over here. Um, yeah, it, it did catch it. I didn't catch it, but it, it, it did. Um, so there was a compilation error that I hadn't noticed. Uh, toggling does not exist on checklist props. Aha, right. TypeScript doing its job for once. Instead of just exploding in a blaze of glory like a blender full of Bic lighters. We got okay. So now we're hitting our breakpoint at least, and uh, not checklist item, and then checklist item, and that says it's true now. So now we have two there. Let's step into it and see what it's called with. So I want to see, like specifically, this set function, what it got called with um, the array of arguments. Sweet, it got called with an array with two objects where they're both checked. So if this doesn't work, then the React gods hate me, and I'm a terrible programmer, and I have to quit my job. Hey, it worked. Thank goodness. And I actually did want the complete items to drop to the bottom of the list, so that works for me too. Um, okay. What's that? Is it the React Gods? Is that just Dan Abramov? Or... <laughs> He's the Redux Gods. Gotcha. So, um, 
What's next? Well, before we go too much deeper into uh, anything beyond that, let's just add a little bit of zhuzh. We've got tests, actually. Before we do anything else, let's make sure those stupid tests are passing now. Um, and see uh, and see what's up there. I'll look around for a drink here. Folks at home will have to hold for just a minute while I find something to wet my whistle. Holy free holies, they're all passing, guys. Can you believe it? We are dangerously close to a feature now. Dangerous. Sweet. So let's uh, let's purdy her up a little bit. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, well. I'm going to show you how I like to do it. Let's start with... Uh, let's start with Chrome here. And what I'm going to do is reattach that inspector window so that you guys can see it side by side. So this is how I like to do a lot of my styling, and all three of you guys have seen this plenty before. We've done this plenty of times, all of us pair programming, um, long before we ever were working on Vida. Um, so let's. Uh, yeah. So um, list style type. Actually, I want to do these on all the LIs that we created. So let's do. Any checklist item. None. And then, um, we can grab that and do something like this. If Matt Stilato is ever watching this, I can hear him screaming already. And dude, what are you doing? It's ghetto. As long as you don't put all of your style in one style sheet like he does, I totally forget it. <laughs> That's fine. Seriously, that dude is the most brilliant SKSS programmer I've ever seen in a and yet something else. He puts all of his styles in a single monolithic I mean, that's how genius works, man. They, you know, you, like, have you seen my lab? Yeah, fair. There's gotta be a quirk. There's this singular style sheet. I like it. I can just scroll up and down in one file and see all of it. Yeah, I don't have to hit Command Shift F. I can just hit Command F. You just get to say, well, you can have to find all of this. Okay, let's see how this goes. Try 
call it 10 and see what that looks like. I feel like if that hover state is doing anything, I can't really tell. I mean, it's definitely doing the cursor thing, but the tint color I don't think is coming through. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, you guys should be able to see what I'm seeing. So let's uh, let's have a quick look at that. So pretending that we're hovering over this is as simple as basically just saying. Um, whoa, wrong button. Whoops! Over here, we'll just go to this little thing that says, huh? And uh, so now we should be getting the styles, including this ion color tint. What were some of our other options? Let's see. We could have done um, what about, yeah, we can do contrast. Let's try some of those options. Throwing shade. Getting hover vibes from it. No. Try. Why not go with something that's super high contrast like white? Because in light mode, white will be white on white. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I think maybe these variables aren't being computed because they're potentially computed uh, earlier. So let me see if uh, this is fixed simply by changing it in the actual file. Oh, you know what? I think the problem is that Ionic likes you to use their um, silly little variables. Let me find them. Yeah, Ion background color and Ion color and whatnot, or Ion text color, something like that. Uh, dash dash. Style yeah. yeah. And so you can access the corresponding CSS value inside the frame. So maybe what I really want is something like uh, ion color. Hopefully that music isn't too loud. I just really like this song. I suppose I could try and load up the uh, the API and dig through the documentation, but I feel like it just loads so slow and I'm so impatient. Um, let's just try a couple of things and see what sticks. It's a tiny bit loud. We'll try ion color and see if that fixes our problem here. You guys ready for a crazy weekend? I'm gonna put a bunch of makeup on, dress like an old man, and uh, fake my way into a COVID shot. Just might work this time. Let's see here. Yes, 
so this just isn't working. This just isn't doing the thing. Some conventions of Ionic definitely confuse me and occasionally frustrate me. Um, why doesn't this want to compute? So let me remember to switch back to IntelliJ so you guys can see what I'm going to try here. I'm definitely overriding colors in other places. I just need to find, um, I think I've got a variables.scss here. Let's see if I can pull that up. Okay. Here's where we're setting a bunch of those, and then let's look at this just color and ion color. We can try ion color primary. You know, I think this is probably a moot point and I'm spending too much time on it because our primary audience for this is uh, mobile and uh, they're not going to get a hover state. So, um, you know, it is something that we should figure out how to do and why it's not working directly is uh, definitely something I want to solve ASAP because better understanding Ionic is going to be important to uh, be able to develop quickly with it. Um, but in the meantime, if it's not going to do the thing, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, the other thing that I uh, want to try and do is make sure that when the items are unchecked that they bubble up to the top of the list. Um, and maybe instead of, uh, you know what, I've got an idea. Um, instead of worrying about the colors, let's do uh, CSS strike through. Um, that would be a good experience for desktop, I think. Uh, so, does anybody remember what the property is in CSS for a strike through? I think that's underline. Um, I think it's strike through. Oh, it is? All right. You got it. Let's do that then. You got it. Um, so, what I want to do is. For those which are, so it's it's line throws, but so. yeah. Where'd you go? So, if it's not uh, if it's not checked when you hover over it, um, then we're gonna do the line through, and. Uh, if it is checked, cool. So what did we get done today? We went from uh, something that had no functionality and wasn't working at all to something that has some functionality. Um, when I hover over these guys, uh, it's acting like it's going to uncheck, which is what I wanted. When I hover over this guy, it's acting like it's going to check. Um, I could probably do a little to improve that experience. I think it's definitely, um, yeah, it's a little, a little janky. I'm not sure how I feel about that.
Um, and the other issue that I'm seeing is that it looks like these LIs are pretty wide right now. Um, you know, they're basically block level elements, so the hover state happens way to the right, and that's also a little janky. Um, those are the things that we might try to work on a little bit. Um, what else? I uh, wish it didn't look quite so bland, you know? Maybe more like a pen and paper checklist. Um, so for that, we might be able to do something. Again, I don't know what the deal is with these colors, but um, let's try ion, background, color, var, ion, color, hint, and then we'll say and and child even and override that rule and make it shade throw in shade Something wonky going on with those colors. Um, I don't know why it's not liking that syntax. Uh, I wonder if it's because the item that I'm referencing is not a React element or a an Ionic element, but rather it's just a uh, regular old Li. Maybe Ionic doesn't know how to play nice with that. That would make a lot of sense. There's no shadow root there. Want all your singing, dancing, joking, and idiosyncrasies with pride. That's good advice. Um, so I got to figure out what's going on with this. Uh, I think maybe the secret or solution might be hidden in some of the other components that I've worked on previously, because um, I've definitely styled some of this stuff uh, particular to um, not the profile, but the user profile or navigation menu rather. I think it has some styles on it. Um, so I'll have to play around with that a little bit. I think I'm doing something silly here and not, not seeing it. Um, let me try one more thing before I give up completely. we have to we'll uh we'll just save it for another day so what did i change um i forgot to show you guys what i was working on there uh so what i changed here is i updated um and added this root selector on the outside uh just because i'm following a pattern that worked on user nav um you know, it seems like for whatever reason, uh, I got better results doing it that way. Um, no, I have my doubts, but uh, let's see. Yeah, no, I don't think we got it yet. There's something wonky about the way that Ionic wants me to style this that I'm not following. Um, it's not, for whatever reason, it's not parsing the stuff that I'm feeding it here. Um, it, I don't need to because they're not crossed out here in the list. Um, I think the issue is that... Uh, you shouldn't use important unless you actually... I try never to use it, yeah. Um, but I don't... Yeah, I hear you. Um, I feel like 
the issue here though is something to do with this not having a shadow root and not being able to like you'll see here in this ion card all the styles and stuff the actual dom elements are templatized inside of the shadow slot um and so let me make sure i'm sharing the right screen here yeah so um you know in here you'll see that these slots contain content that uh that pertains to you know what's actually in here and then that corresponds to this down here um but these LIs are just regular HTML. And I think what I need to do to make this work right is to use ion item elements. Um, but I'm trying to keep these sessions to about an hour piece. So they don't get to, do, to be too grueling and so that people can actually watch them from home and enjoy. Um, I think we made a ton of progress here. So I think we're gonna break for uh, the weekend here. Um, and then next time we come around, we'll take a look at maybe switching these out for ion items to make them work right. Because, hey, it's ionic. We're supposed to use ionic elements and, uh, and make use of the framework the way it was designed. Um, so I'm not really surprised that me deviating from that has caused some undesirable effects. Uh, we'll tighten that up next time we get on pair programming with greats and friends. Um, so thank you so much again to Steve and Elliot and Gio for jumping on the call. As always, you guys are a huge help and I definitely appreciate the extra eyes. Yeah, yeah. I'm loving it. Awesome. Outstanding. Well, if anybody happened to tune in from home, thank you for jumping in and uh, stick with us. You know, keep jumping in. Uh, I can't promise we'll be doing it every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to take a couple off just so we can have fun and, um, you know, not be on all the time. But uh, it is great to get a nice little record of the conversation here and to show the growth because uh, this is just episode four. And by the end of the, the end of the year, I think we're going to have a few features done. And, uh, and be showing a lot more progress and hopefully have some users, which would be great too. Um, so thank you from everyone at Crates Media and Vide. And uh, my name is Crates. I will see you all next time.